By most metrics, the Keller family was happy and an example of what the typical American family strive to be. The daughter, Kayleen, had recently graduated from high school and was looking forward to studying game design at DigiPen Institute of Technology in Redmond, Virginia. Lynette, the mother, was a stay-at-home mom and homemaker, and in spite of her husband working full-time, they did have to borrow money on occasion from family to make ends meet, but all indications said that they were happy. The father, Peter Keller, actually made good money refurbishing computers. He was an avid amateur survivalist and was quite knowledgeable about how to live off the land. The Kellers were quite a close-knit family unit, Lynette herself being quite close with her mother, sister, and twin brother. That's what makes what happens next seem all the more evil. It's been said multiple times that you can never truly see where evil comes from and when it's going to strike. And this story is one of those instances that only proves that to be even more true. Because in spite of the happy family facade that had even the mother and daughter fooled, Things were not as they appeared to be. And Peter Keller, well, he had a plan. Hello and welcome to a new episode, folks. Today we're going back to 2012 to discuss Peter Keller, a man who murdered his own family to cover up his selfish desire to live off the grid as a modern day outlaw. So if you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. Let's not waste any more time here. I'm your host, Kevin, and this is Crime Chronicle. Today we find ourselves in North Bend, Washington, not too far from Seattle. North Bend found itself as the primary filming location for the show Twin Peaks, a former lumber mill town it has since found itself as a bedroom city for nearby Seattle. Nintendo actually has an assembly plant in the area where most of its North American stock is put together. Surrounding North Bend is mostly dense forests leading to mountains, their snow-capped peaks framing some truly breathtaking sights. Being so near to nature has naturally bred generations of skilled outdoorsmen. You'd be hard pressed to find anyone native to the area that didn't spend a fair amount of their time camping in the thick woodlands. That brings us to our subject today, Peter Keller. Born and raised in the area, Keller had been exploring these woods since a very young age, and had been quite skilled and knowledgeable at survival in this environment. Peter Keller's outward appearance was that of a normal family man, blending seamlessly into the fabric of his quiet suburban neighborhood. He possessed all the qualities one would associate with an upstanding citizen, a devoted husband, a caring father, and a friendly neighbor. His charismatic and unremarkable personality allowed him to successfully conceal his true intentions, leaving his community unsuspecting of the darkness that lurked within. To all who knew Peter Keller, he seemed like an ordinary man, leading an idyllic life. He interacted with his neighbors and community members, attending barbecues, exchanging pleasantries, and even lending a helpful hand when needed. Keller, however, had a secret. Well, it's about two weeks before the end. This is going to be my last video, probably before, till after that. Um, that's terrible. A twisted desire that he skillfully hid from prying eyes. Behind closed doors, his true nature manifested in his dark obsession, one that would eventually lead to the annihilation of his own family. Well, it's about two weeks before I finally drop out of society and start this project. Um, yeah. It is chilling to think that amidst the tranquil streets and neatly manicured lawns of the suburban enclave, Keller harbored sinister intentions. His family, seemingly protected by the safety and comfort of their home, were unaware of the danger that loomed within their own walls. He's a great guy. He, uh, you know, he stuck around with me. I'm, uh, you know, some some guys are kind of leave when you get that, you know, it's it's part of your vows. But anyways, I don't want to get onto that. I just that just freaks me out. It is this dichotomy, the stark contrast between the serene facade and the impending tragedy, that amplifies the horror of the situation. Peter Keller's twisted obsession consumed him driving him to meticulously planning the annihilation of his own family. 
His descent into darkness stemmed from a complex web of psychological torment, deep-rooted frustrations, and a growing resentment towards his loved ones and society as a whole. I just feel like I'm getting knocked back every time financially. My wife is just, just gonna suck all the money out that I have. And I'm so excited because I can actually afford these um, these, these deals. My husband, <laughs> he gave me some money to, to go in here, so I'm like so excited. I'm getting to the point where just trying to live and pay bills and live as a civilian and go to work, I just, it just freaks me out. It's actually more comfortable for me to think about living out here, um, robbing banks, pharmacies, just taking what I want for as long as I can. In the depths of his twisted mind, Keller found solace in researching and preparing for the gruesome act that would forever alter the lives of those around him. He delved into the world of survival tactics, studying methods of concealment and destruction. Every step he took further revealed the calculated and sinister mind behind the eventual crime. Keller's attention to detail was unsettling. He acquired an arsenal of weapons and tools, meticulously stockpiling supplies for what was to come. Camouflaging the entrance to his underground bunker became a priority as he plotted his macabre act in secrecy. Keller had a YouTube channel where he documented his outdoor survival tactics. Through his chilling video diaries, the true nature of Keller's thoughts and motivations emerged. The recordings provided a disturbing first-hand account of his meticulous planning, his distorted reasoning, and the coldness with which he contemplated the murder of his own family. Haunted by an obsession so twisted and sinister, Keller's carefully constructed facade unraveled to reveal the depths of his depravity. The curtain of normalcy he had maintained for so long was lifted, exposing the darkness that lurked within. During this whole sequence of events, his family was keenly aware that Keller had fallen down the doomsday prepper rabbit hole. However, at no point did they believe the father and husband had fallen off the deep end. Kayleen, in fact, joked to her boyfriend on more than one occasion that her father was preparing for the end of the world. Peter Keller's descent into doomsday prepping led him to create a secluded bunker, a twisted sanctuary where his delusions and paranoia thrived. Within the confines of this hidden underground structure, Keller's twisted view of reality took hold, fueling his obsession and sealing the fate of his family. The bunker itself was a chilling backdrop for the unfolding tragedy. Designed to keep the outside world at bay, it provided the perfect environment for Keller's sinister plans to take shape. The living conditions within the bunker were stark and isolated, reflecting the depths of Keller's self-imposed imprisonment. The walls, cold and damp, echoed with the weight of his delusions, while the dim lighting cast eerie shadows on the cramped space. As Keller's twisted psyche took hold, the bunker became a haven for his darkest thoughts and desires. It was here that he meticulously planned every aspect of his family's annihilation, from stockpiling supplies to camouflaging the entrance. The bunker's setup was a testament to his calculated nature, with hidden compartments and secret passageways ensuring his actions remained concealed. Within the bunker's confines, Keller's delusions grew stronger, blurring the lines between reality and his twisted fantasies. The isolation he imposed upon himself only served to reinforce his belief in the necessity of his heinous acts. In this self-imposed prison, he found solace in his distorted view of the world, where his family's annihilation was the only path to salvation. The bunker became a physical manifestation of Keller's descent into madness, a place where his darkest impulses were nurtured and allowed to flourish. It was within these walls that he transformed from a seemingly ordinary family man into a cold-blooded killer. The chilling reality of what transpired inside the secluded bunker serves as a haunting reminder of the depths of human depravity and the devastating consequences it can unleash. Peter Keller's meticulous planning and calculated actions reveal the chilling nature of his intentions. Every detail of his preparation was carefully thought out, showcasing the methodical approach he took in executing his plan. From stockpiling supplies to camouflaging the bunker entrance, Keller left no stone unturned. 
His bunker, hidden deep within the secluded wilderness, was equipped with specific features designed to sustain his self-imposed isolation. The eerie backdrop of this underground structure set the stage for the unfolding tragedy. The bunker was so deep into the dense wilderness, mind you, that when the police eventually did begin to search the area for it, they needed a helicopter in order to bring in the necessary manpower and equipment. Keller acquired an arsenal of weapons and tools, further highlighting his calculated nature. The choice of these instruments reveals his intent to carry out his plan with precision and efficiency. The chilling aspect lies not only in the acquisition of these items, but also in the fact that they were carefully selected to serve his sinister purpose. The calculated nature of his planning, the arsenal of weapons at his disposal, and the disturbing insights from his video diaries all paint a picture of a man driven by a sinister obsession. The chilling details of his preparations serve as a stark reminder of the depths of human depravity and the devastating consequences it can have on innocent lives. On April 22, 2012, Peter put his dark plan into action, first killing his wife Lynette, then his daughter Kayleen shooting them both once in the head while they were still asleep in their beds. He then ringed his entire residence with gas cans and set it all ablaze in the hopes that the fire would destroy all evidence that could lead authorities to his bunker. The aftermath of Peter Keller's heinous actions left a trail of devastation and heartbreak in its wake, particularly for his wife's twin brother, Jean Rocha. The emotional toll on family, friends, and neighbors was immeasurable as they struggled to come to terms with the unimaginable horror that had occurred with in their midst. The loss of Keller's wife and daughter rippled through the county, leaving a void that could never be filled. Their lives were cut short in a senseless act of violence, leaving loved ones grappling with grief and disbelief. The tragedy served as a stark reminder of the fragility of life and the darkness that can lurk behind closed doors. In the wake of the devastating event, the legal proceedings and investigations that followed sought to bring justice to the victims and their shattered community. The weight of the tragedy was felt by the criminal justice system, as they worked tirelessly to uncover the truth and hold Keller accountable for his actions. The legal process served as a means of closure for those affected, offering a glimmer of hope in the face of overwhelming despair. The pain and trauma caused by Keller's heinous act would be felt for years to come, a constant reminder of the darkness that can reside within even the most seemingly ordinary individuals. The tragedy served as a chilling reminder of the need for vigilance and support within communities as they strive to prevent such horrors from occurring again. The tragic fate of Keller's family would forever serve as a somber reminder of the fragility of life and the importance of cherishing those we hold dear. The intense manhunt for Peter Keller was a race against time as law enforcement agencies scrambled to bring him to justice. The FBI took the lead in the search, deploying a vast array of resources and expertise to apprehend the elusive family annihilator. The challenges faced by the FBI were immense. Keller had meticulously planned his mistake, leaving behind a trail of false leads and misdirection. Despite the difficulties, the FBI made significant breakthroughs in their pursuit of Keller. They meticulously combed through evidence, piecing together a profile of the fugitive. Tips from the police poured in, providing crucial leads that helped narrow down his possible whereabouts. The dedication and determination of law enforcement were unwavering as they worked tirelessly to bring Keller to justice. As the manhunt intensified, the FBI coordinated with local law enforcement agencies, pooling their resources and expertise. They conducted extensive searches of the surrounding areas, utilizing helicopters, drones, and canine units to cover vast stretches of rugged terrain. Every possible lead was followed, every tip thoroughly investigated. The collective determination to capture Keller was palpable, as everyone understood the urgency of the situation. Despite the tireless efforts of the FBI and their partners, Keller remained elusive. As the manhunt entered its criminal phase, the community held its breath hoping for a swift resolution. The FBI remained focused, determined to apprehend Keller and bring an end to the reign of terror that had gripped the quiet suburban neighborhood. The fate of Peter Keller hung in the balance as law enforcement closed in on their target. Peter Keller's chilling video entries provided a disturbing glimpse into the twisted psyche that fueled his murderous intent. These videos Videos offered insights into his delusions, obsessions, and distorted reality that consumed him. In his vlog, Keller's thoughts and emotions are laid bare, revealing the depths of his depravity. He talks about his desire to live off the grid and his willingness to kill his family to do it. 
Keller's log also revealed his meticulous planning and preparation. He meticulously details his stockpiling of supplies, the construction of his hidden bunker, and the acquisition of weapons. The video entries provide a chilling window into Keller's inner world, showcasing the extent of his delusions and the warped reality he inhabited. They offer a disturbing insight into the mind of a man driven by a twisted obsession and a desire for control. As investigators uncovered these diary entries, they were confronted with the horrifying truth of Keller's intentions. The videos served as a haunting reminder of the darkness that lurked beneath the surface of his seemingly ordinary life. As the manhunt for Peter Keller intensified, law enforcement agencies meticulously planned their final move after tracking the bunker's location to Rattlesnake Ridge. They knew that confronting Keller would be a dangerous and high-stakes operation, requiring precision and careful execution. The events leading up to the final standoff were filled with tension and anticipation as authorities closed in on their target. With the knowledge that Keller was armed and dangerous, law enforcement deployed a specialized tactical team to handle the situation. Their primary objective was to ensure the safety of both the officers involved and the surrounding community. Every detail was considered from the positioning of the officers to the communication strategies employed. As the team approached Keller's secluded bunker, they were acutely aware of the potential dangers that awaited them. The bunker, hidden deep within the wilderness, provided Keller with a sense of security and control. But now it would become the backdrop for his ultimate downfall. There was no standoff, however. Keller had been listening to the police's radio frequency the entire time and knew they were closing in. In the end, Keller decided he didn't want to risk being apprehended by police. As one of the officers searching for the entrance to Keller's bunker was scouting the hill directly above the room he was in, Keller used one of his handguns to end his own life. The scouting officer heard the pop from the gunshot as well as the thud made when Keller's body fell from its position into another room below in the bunker. Acting under the assumption that Keller was still alive and dangerous, officers located the bunker entrance after the discovery of Keller's footprints and tracing the smell of smoke from a wood-burning stove. Negotiators were prepared to talk him out as well as SWAT to storm in should Peter prove difficult and aggressive. When no response to any attempts at communication was made, they pumped tear gas into the bunker to draw him out. As tensions escalated, law enforcement made the difficult decision to breach the bunker. They utilized specialized equipment and tactics to gain entry, fully aware of the risks involved. The atmosphere was charged with adrenaline and fear as officers prepared to confront a man who had already proven his capacity for violence. There, inside the bunker, they found Peter's body with a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. The ordeal was finally over, and there would be no trial. On April 28, 2012, the manhunt for Peter Keller would officially end with his deceased body being removed from the bunker, his time as an outlaw on the run only lasting about five days. Inside the bunker, officers found a stockpile of weapons and ammunition, as well as body armor, cash amounting into the tens of thousands of dollars, and enough provisions to last one man quite a long time. They found his video camera, which still had recent recordings Keller had made just prior to the murder of his wife and daughter. They showed his desire and resolve to live apart from society as an outlaw, that he viewed his family as a hindrance to that wish and his willingness to end himself should law enforcement come knocking. At this point, I don't know what's going to happen. It, I may get... Uh caught right away. Basically, if I get caught, I'm just going to shoot myself. So, I mean, I could basically be dead in two weeks or three weeks. I don't know. It's all up to chance at this point. So, I don't think anyone knows where I'm at. But if they put it together, who knows? At this point, I have to take that chance. So, it's just going to be a point of you know, go as far as I can. My, I do have my escape, and that's death. <laughs> I can always shoot myself, and I'm okay with that, so. Peter Keller was a selfish man. He put himself not only before his family, but society as well. Had he just wanted to disappear and live in the woods away from people is one thing, and I can sometimes understand that. But to also rob your own daughter of her future and betray your wife in such a way, to not only kill her, but to destroy the home that she had put her whole married life into creating, 
That's just unforgivable. Lynette's mother, her sister, Kimberly Rocha Pearson, and twin brother, Gene Rocha, were in disbelief at Peter's absolutely heinous actions. To them, and everyone around him, Peter gave off a calm and collected aura that no one felt threatened by. The Rochas used the money seized from the bunker to establish the Kayleen Keller Memorial Scholarship for young women interested in attending the DigiPen Institute for Game Design allowing their niece's hopes to be inherited by the recipient. I'm certain that Kayleen would have loved this, and I'm pretty sure Lynette would have appreciated it too. In the end, it's a small thing that can hopefully keep their spirits alive. And as for Peter, well, he's certainly not in a better place. In the end, for all Peter's talk, for all of his skill with how well he actually put that bunker together, he still took a coward's way out. He couldn't face his wife's family, whatever family he had left, knowing what he'd done. He refused to be judged in the eyes of the law and took matters into his own hands. He took the coward's way out. In death as in life, he took the most selfish option. And unfortunately, that's how the incident's going to be remembered. May you rest in hell, you piece of shit. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you appreciate what I'm doing here and wish to support me, the best thing for you to do is like the video and share it with your friends. I post new shorts every other day and new long form cases every other week. So if you're interested in keeping up to date with everything I'm posting, then please consider subscribing. And don't forget to hit that bell to be notified when a new video goes live. I'm always open to feedback. So if you have any suggestions on things you'd like to see on the channel, consider leaving them in the comments down below. Now, if you're eager for more of my content, YouTube thinks that you'll like this video that I am definitely pointing to right here. Once again, I've been your host, Kevin, and this has been Crime Chronicle. You stay safe out there.